uh, or we should say case one here, case one, spherical charge. So let's say we have uh, here a conducting, example one, Okay, so I want to use Gauss's law to find the electric field around a conducting sphere of radius r. And I want to find the electric field for r less than or the same as r and for r greater or the same as r. So I want to find the electric field out here somewhere outside of the sphere and inside of the sphere, okay? So let's do outside of the sphere first. Let's say I want to find the electric field here. Now, if I had to do it the regular way, the regular way is to say that the elect uh, you take a certain, uh, charge a certain charge, let's say something like this, let's say a little dq, and then you say the electric field So you say, you take a little piece of charge on the sphere, and you say that little piece of charge has a little electric field over there in that direction, right, DE. And then you can use a little bit of symmetry, maybe you can take a, another little piece of charge over here, okay? And you could take a little, uh, uh, that one has an electric field this way, and the two add up to give you like this, right? So the two add up to give you like that. So you take a little piece from there, a little piece from there, and then you could do a little integral over the whole uh, circle, like a ring, right? You could take a little ring and find the total electric field of the ring, okay? <clears throat> so the total electric field of the ring will be the integral of the whole thing uh, around the uh, circle. And that will give you the total electric field created by a ring. So you could uh, find, uh, you could do an integral here, find the uh, electric, it looks like this now. You see, so you could come up for a certain formula for depending on the radius of this ring. And so let's say this is the distance uh, x, and this is the radius of the ring, r. You could come up for a certain formula for the electric field of a, of a ring. Then, in order to find the electric field of a whole sphere, you would integrate over all those rings, right? You would uh, integrate over, let's say, another ring right here. Th that ring is going to be a little smaller, right? And then the next ring is going to be a little smaller, and it's going to be a little smaller, and then finally it's going to be a dot. And then you can go backwards to the, uh, the biggest uh, ring. The biggest ring is going to be from the middle, and then it's going to get smaller again. So on. And then you have, it forms a sphere. You see the idea? So uh, if you have a sphere, it's composed of a bunch of rings, like that, getting bigger and getting smaller. And then each of those rings create an electric field there, and you add up all those electric fields. You see the process is kind of long to find the electric field. But it is doable. If I had time, I can show you how to do it. It is a doable uh, problem that you could uh, integrate over all those rings, and you would get the right answer. Now, using Gauss's law, we can get the answer in about a minute. We don't have to do all that, okay? So the reason why you can get the answer really quick using Gauss's law is because the sphere has spherical symmetry. The sphere has a spherical symmetry. So you can argue that the electric field a certain distance away 
the electric field over there has the same magnitude as the electric field over here, uh, the same distance away on this side. You see what I mean? So the, the electric field, a distance r away from the center of the sphere, no matter where that distance r is, The electric field has the same magnitude. So you can kind of create like a little sphere here around the charge. And the electric field around that sphere the electric field around that sphere has the same magnitude, except it, uh, it's got a different direction, right? But it's got the same magnitude. So what I could do is I can apply Gauss's law to this Gaussian surface. This is going to be my Gaussian surface now. Remember what Gauss's law says? The electrical flux through any surface, closed surface, is equal to the charge enclosed in the surface divided by E0. So I can apply Gauss's law to this surface. over E0, okay? And therefore, since the electric field is the same uh, magnitude all around, and the area vector, the dA, is what? The, uh, the, the dA vector is a vector that comes out of the area, just like we talked about the other day. It's a vector that comes out of the surface, right? So the dot product between the A and the DA just becomes EDA. EDA. And here is the main crucial thing. Not only is the dot product equal to EDA, but since the E has the same magnitude all around the sphere, therefore it can come out of the integral. You see? So we no longer have to actually worry about integrating the E. OK? It comes out of the integral, and you're left with integral of dA. E integral dA. And then an the integral dA is just A, the total area of the sphere. OK? Uh, <clears throat> so now the electric field, therefore, is equal to Q over A E0. And the area of the, uh, the area of the sphere, if its radius is R, is equal to 4 pi R squared. Okay, so uh, 4 pi r squared is the surface area of a sphere. So this one, look how, look how long it took us to get the answer. E equals q over 4 pi r squared e0. If we had done it with that longer method, with the rings, and we integrated it, we would have gotten the same answer. You see? So look how uh, crucial, look how important the Gauss's law was. It enabled us to find the electric field of a sphere in one minute. Now, it can only be used on a certain object which has some symmetry. In this case, the sphere has spherical symmetry. I can't use Gauss's law on a pyramid like this, for example. Let's say there's a pyramid that is charged up, and I ask the question, what is the electric field at a certain distance from the pyramid? Well, there's no particular symmetry that it has. The electric field is going to emanate from the pyramid. And the electric field will come out of the pyramid in a weird way. 